Good morning, everyone. I'm very honored to see such a full house here. Thank you all for being here today. <laughs> so, Dobro jutro, dame i gospodo. I hvala vam što ste danas moji domaćini na Universitetu u Tuzli. So. <laughs> My goal next year is to come back and do my whole speech in Bosnia, and we'll see. <laughs> uh, Rector Halilovic, esteemed members of the University of Tuzla faculty and staff, special guests, i dragi studenti, I'm very happy to be here today to talk about an issue that is near and dear to my own heart, the role of the media, and specifically your future as journalists. This is my second chance to get out and speak with university students. What I learned at my first stop, which was at the University of Sarajevo, is that I really don't want to talk too long because I want to hear what you have to say and engage in a dialogue. But let me start by asking whether any of you, especially the journalism students among you, read the blog post that I wrote on World Press Freedom Day last weekend? If you read it, can you, oh, we've got one. <laughs> All right, there's no quiz, I promise. Uh, you know, what I said in there is that it's tough to be a journalist in Bosnia and Herzegovina today. It's challenging in the face of a lot of different issues. But in spite of that, I'm very glad that a number of you here today are pursuing a career in journalism. It matters. First and foremost, it matters because a democracy depends on an informed electorate. During last fall's elections here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, my embassy colleagues spent a lot of time encouraging voters to cast their ballots based not on ethnicity or nationalism, but on the issues, the issues of economy, the issues that matter to people in their day, everyday lives. Journalists have the difficult task of finding what those issues are and outlining them in a way that an average citizen can understand. Not to come to conclusions, but to start a debate a debate that is one of the essential foundations of democracy. A key component of that, and possibly the hardest part, is figuring out how to make those complex issues relevant to viewers, listeners, and readers. Press in the US don't always do this well enough, but it is the quality that distinguishes truly great journalists. Back in August of 2002, I became the press officer at the American Embassy in Seoul, Korea. I walked into what we call a perfect storm. They had just opened the first online media organization in South Korea that month called Oh My News. The US military had a terrible accident where they ran over two middle school girls. Huge protests were starting downtown. And the, Uni the United States Assistant Secretary for East Asia arrived from Pyongyang to announce that North Korea was developing a highly enriched uranium program. People panicked, and by December, we had 100,000 protesters outside of City Hall. Americans were attacked in the streets, and the entire Western press corps in Asia moved to Korea, 75 major international journalists for the December 19th election of a new president. My phone rang one day, and a voice said, this is Tom Friedman of the New York Times. I'm coming to Seoul, and I'll be joined by David Sanger. I don't know if you know these names, Friedman is the most senior editorial writer for the New York Times, and Sanger is the longtime Washington correspondent. Friedman is a Middle East expert, Sanger a non-proliferation expert with a lot of experience on Asia. What they had done was to spend significant time, one in the Middle East and one in Asia, building the connections between North Korea's nuclear program and growing programs of mass destruction in Syria and Iran. When they came in to meet the American ambassador, I was there as the press officer. They didn't say, what do you think about this? They said, we have this list of 20 things. And so we're going to go through them one by one. So if we write this paragraph, will we be wrong? We know the following four things absolutely. If we say the fifth, will we be correct? It was the most fascinating interview I've ever sat through. They had fact after fact after fact that they were simply going around checking with experts in the region. When their article ran on the front page of the New York Times, it caused an international sensation. 
Their hard work and tough research launched a story that continues today. Thank goodness here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, one issue we don't have is nuclear problems. <laughs> but your society does face major challenges. And although it has some, it does not have enough brave, tough journalists who are empowered, willing, and able to do the long, hard work to get a story that is fully researched and thoroughly sourced. When I spoke a few weeks ago at the University of Sarajevo, I listed what I think are the key issues here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I think the five big things that face people are the need for political reform, for economic reform, countering corruption, improving education, and creating a shared vision for the future of the country. So when we get to the question and answer session, I would love to hear from you what you plan to do as journalists or in other fields to make the link between abstract policy discussions about these issues and real tangible impacts on people's lives. How can you as journalists lead the discussion around these issues in such a way as to help citizens feel empowered as opposed to helpless or ap apathetic? How can you make them feel able to change society for the better and hold political leaders accountable for all the promises that they make during election campaigns? I do believe that Bosnia and Herzegovina has been given a new window of opportunity for success this year. The EU initiative and a new government open a path to a positive future that I hope people will grab a hold of. And journalists have indeed been a positive force on these issues. But given the lack of political will in this country, I fear that in order for the reforms that are essential to the success of the EU initiative, and in fact to the future of Bosnia and Herzegovina, to have a chance for success, you as the next generation of journalists are going to have hard work to do in the coming years. It's critical that both the government and the media explain to people how such technical tasks as public administration reform, modernization of labor laws, and reduction of political interference in economic life and public companies will fundamentally improve the quality of life for citizens. The average person doesn't understand that easily, but putting it into words they can understand will make all the difference. Another time-consuming and sometimes dangerous job is the important work of exposing corruption. This is an overwhelming problem here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is one that is crushing the potential for progress, and it is one where the press plays an essential role in changing it. When people tell me that I need to bring, for example, more American investment here to BIH, I tell them that would honestly be pretty easy. As soon as the rule of law here gives companies the sense that their investment will be protected, but not before that. In order to root out corruption, it will take investigative reporting. This is tough, but an absolutely important type of journalism. Good investigative reporting takes time, it can be expensive, and it requires courage to take on powerful voices. But that is what should happen in a democracy with a truly free press. Back before the war in Ukraine caused a rift in US-Russia relations, the Obama administration had launched something called the US-Russia Bilateral Presidential Commission. This commission included over 20 working groups on every aspect of politics and economics, and it also included one on the media. The group focused on the changing business of media in each country. I attended two of the four sessions in Boston and Washington, and then led the fourth in St. Petersburg. Listening to a dozen US and Russian media executives including Russian oligarchs who owned major traditional and digital media, talk openly about the challenges of investigative reporting in their societies and the role it has to keep societies open and honest was something I will not soon forget. We set up exchanges of young journalists between major media organizations in Moscow and across the United States, and it was eye-opening for both sides. I hope one day we will be able to reinvigorate those important exchanges. Corruption does exist everywhere, even in the United States. Right now, we have not one, but two members of Congress, one at the federal level and one at the state level, under public investigation by the FBI. It's not that it's not going to happen, it's that it needs to be addressed openly in societies. Journalists 
often working with partners in civil society, like non-governmental organizations or watchdog groups, can get wind of a scandal, hunt down the facts, find strong documentation and reliable sources, and publish the results. That allows law enforcement then to pick up the story and do the work to seek prosecution if it's warranted. The perpetrators have their day in court and go to jail if they're found guilty. I know there are lots of reasons why this is not happening here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but it needs to become the norm. Honest exposure of this issue is essential for people everywhere. And here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's key to get this country where people want it to be, to become citizens of a functioning, stable, prosperous state, enjoying the standard of living that most of Europe does. <clears throat> this beautiful country is rich in so many things, highly educated people, beautiful nature, large stores of resources and energy. Citizens, each and every one of them, deserve to benefit from these assets, and they can and they will if corruption ceases to be a blockade on their path. Which brings me to what I consider possibly the most critical role journalists play in society. <clears throat> we count on media in a democratic society, not just to report the facts and to expose political impropriety and corruption, but also to expose injustice, to be the voice of the voiceless, those who are marginalized and overlooked, be it people with disabilities, <coughs> the LGBT community, victims of domestic violence, or anyone else facing neglect or prejudice. They count on you to tell their story. The only way for any society to deal with all these issues is to start by shining a light on them, bringing them out into the open where they will be the subject of honest public debate about how to address them and move forward for the common good. And you are that light as a journalist. We will continue on our part to join with like-minded members of the international community, like the OSCE representative on freedom of the media, to defend your right to tell the stories that desperately need to be told here in and Herzegovina, to hold political leaders accountable, to expose corruption and social injustice, but also to highlight the progress when Bosnia and Herzegovina moves forward to capture the stories of people who are succeeding against the odds and making a difference. People everywhere I go in Bosnia and Herzegovina tell me that they're demoralized by all the negative news. And yet, I meet inspiring people every week who are making a difference. I would love to hear your thoughts on how to get those good news stories out to people here as well. In closing, I would like to take a moment to underscore the responsibilities that come with the right to tell these stories. Journalists have tremendous power to effect change, but nothing will undermine that power faster than irresponsible reporting that discredits the press and causes people to question why media, media rights should be protected. Journalistic ethics in the digital age would be the subject of an entire different speech. And I hope that you still retain your ideals and don't need to, me to tell you the importance of honesty and integrity in reporting. But as you get out into the real world and face real challenges, please hold on to those ideals and let them steer your decision making. Be it quoting reliable sources, protecting the privacy of crime victims, or double and triple checking your facts, as long as you do your part, we will continue to do ours making it clear to the authorities in this country that press freedom is a priority for the U.S. government and essential to a successful future for the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you so much, and I hope that you will join in and give me all of your thoughts and questions. Thank you so much.